Good morning everyone, my name is Christian from 2 Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome back to King Arthur the Role Playing World Game. Where we're continuing today's campaign of a righteous and Christian path. And last time we took over Camelot or Londinium that we turned into Camelot. We will be able pretty soon in the winter to start taking some actions into our capital. We made yes, Sir Kay ask him to recruit a bunch of troops going forward. So hopefully in like in one year's time we will have all the necessary troops. But we can't sit still yes, for that king. long doing nothing. So what I'll do is, as I said earlier, we're gonna unite these armies. So what I want to happen for now is let's bring you over here. Or maybe we'll bring you over on this side. Let's do something like that. I don't think it matters too much. And then what we'll do is we'll ask Sir Lunken, because he is a proud leader. We are going to make him a leader because he's also a warlord, so some of these, the leadership will add up and also the adventure will add up to the entire party. And these guys, they're champions, so they don't need to be leaders. Okay, well with this guy in charge, he is more loyal and we're spending less for the army. Let's see, what would be the difference? You can see, like we're saving about 200 gold and four, 300 food, so it's a bit of a difference. Every little bit counts in the long run. We have like four cavalry unit in here. Uh, these champions, they're knights as well as these turning knights. So they are heavy cavalry. They are very good, very strong. As you can see on both attack and defense, I believe that they're slightly slower than the light cavalry overall but yeah and their stamina is a lot lower but they'll be a lot better at doing the charges as you can see like if we keep click on or not click keep the mouse on the unit type it says that they're very weak on hard terrain they're weak in storms they're weak versus crossbowmen and spearmen they have a very strong trample and they're weak versus armor piercing their armor is heavy and their movement is fast. Now if I go to one of these light cavalries just to compare. They are weak on hard terrain, weak in a storm, the same as any other cavalry. They're very they're weak versus archers. That's because they don't have the defenses. They're very weak against spears. They're weak versus fast attackers. That uh, those are light infantry generally speaking. And they're weak versus heavy armored units as well so basically you use them for hit and runs and you'll see here that the armor is light but the movement is very fast so definitely better than these guys okay so we have some spears in this army we have uh, two units of light uh, troops i think that maybe i want to do something like this like have these guys into heavy cavalry but then have the light troops be free, have these guys be like, have these guy be with the break shields still. Let's see, what uh, on abilities, masterful tactics, yeah, definitely want him on that. This guy gives loyalty and gold income. And he has here Seneschal, which is cost minus five, to upkeep for all units in the hero's army that is quite cool and i think i want to give this guy some land he's a proud leader okay he was ferocious giving more military and he gave us extra food plus he has these traits right here with two percent extra loyalty and ten percent extra food and gold so i like that yeah can't move him because they didn't have movement anymore but I would like to recruit a few more troops so let's see if we can do that during our next turn let's end greetings my king the king of Mercia needs someone to enter the mysterious forest of Medigrain to clear up the events that have been happening there recently travelers have been disappearing in the deep forest the once thriving villages are empty and the wind carries strange music at night 
It might be a very dangerous task, but it is certain to have its rewards. We have a separate task here. Into the deep wood. So it came to pass that King Ethelred, the ruler of Mercia, heard of rumors and reports telling of the woods of Benegrain, the most ancient and most mysterious forest in Britannia. This living heart of Britannia has always been a dangerous spot that myths always refer to as the deep wood. But in the last year, things have gotten worse than ever. The disappearance of children from villagers nearby, the voices and the light among the trees lend credence to the rumors that the gods of the forest, the sheep, have returned. The intriguing heirs keep King Elred's attention on his own kingdom, and the army has sent to the deepwood disappeared without trace. The Mercian king has heard about your knights and has turned to you for help. So we have 12 turns to send an army to Bedegrain Forest to investigate the mysterious events. We would get 5,000 gold. We would get Lady Lynette. Lady Lynette's beauty and gentleness is captivating, but she is much more than an empty headed mistress. So she is gentle, minus 50 military to own kingdom, but she is a merchant, plus 50 to all trade incomes in owned fiefdoms, plus 2 loyalty to her husband because she's beautiful and shrewd plus 25 experience points on completed quests. So this is pretty good. This is the loyalty that you get for um, marrying her to someone. And this is, I think, the money that you get if you sell her. And then we have the Axe of Firbolg, so plus one fight, plus two fight after 10 battles, and after 30 battles, 50 magic resistance to the hero's unit. Pretty expensive weapon. So let's see. You will get plenty of quests going forward. You don't have to worry too much about it. King Senric, seeing the growing armies of King Arthur, sent an envoy with some armed warriors. The king offers his loyalties, although the price he asks is far from modest. So we we have an envoy over here. This is the quest. We have eleven more turns to go to it so this might be a priority we can go after the air here but we will definitely That's have my king. some sort of a battle let's take a look at the armies now the thing is like i'm looking at these champions and they're pretty expensive i wonder if it's worth keeping them all around we have light troops we would need i think i would like some britain archers like they're good in melee but i i'm guessing we don't actually need them so maybe oh yeah we don't have enough gold to recruit here Maybe I'll just keep them in here for now. Or maybe, On my yeah, way. let's see what type of offer does he bring us. Diplomacy type quests offer two different routes to complete. You can choose fighting or offering some resources, resources such as gold, food, an artifact, or even a lady. Every opponent has favored and unwanted goods. As you offer more and more, the blue bar on the right side raises so here it is, what can we do? Well, if we pay more, King Arthur's army can pass through King Sinric's land unharmed for the next few years, or he becomes our vassal. How much would we need to give him for that? Well, a whole lot. As you can see, he doesn't prefer anything else except for gold, and it costs us too much. On my way. To do anything else so yes well, my lord we'll wait a year and i think we're gonna go into the forest of bedroom grain first and we're gonna return back down here and in the meantime we'll recruit yes, an army these guys go save the sun and probably help the christian king in the north maybe even breaking this curse like is this the mission still available 
I think the mission with the brothers is not available anymore. Yeah, doesn't look like it. That was a secondary mission and we should have rushed to it earlier. But now it's not possible anymore, okay? Yeah, don't worry too much about... Catherine, the ruler of your gun, declares wars against you. His armies are already assembling and soon they will be ready to invade your kingdom. Um, who has declared war on us? These guys? King Catherine. Yep. Okay. Well, can't do much about that. Let's see here, we are still replenishing, it takes like two more turns to do this. I am going to give you, let's give him... I'm gonna give you one more point in uh, adventuring. And after that... Let's go with a, a liege, because we do have three provinces under him. After that... With this guy, I think I'm going to go with spell weaving just to get this extra magic, the extra mana points, and I'm gonna spend more on mana. Yeah, I think that is about it. I don't think I want anything else. Okay, and with you, definitely more attack with Balan, Sir Balan. I could throw in an extra level on cleave. Let's see, regenerate heals faster from injured state, 25 plus 500 HP. To make him super strong, active ability damage for the targeted unit and minus 10 defense for their opponent. Sound. The Sound of Courage, plus 30 stamina for all your units within 100 meters. I mean, this is 30 mana, this is like 60 mana, and we have 150. That means that using this twice is 120, plus this one it would be 150, I think I like that. Let's give him this ability. Uh, and we still have some points here, yeah. we're gonna give these guys two more swords, they're disciplined, losing stamina reduces the battle skills by only half of their normal amount, for the cavalry, let's give them some extra attack, mm -hmm. then we have the footman, extra defense, more attacks, Here we are with the archery. Good. Okay, so we're doing good here. Yes, my lead. Let's take a look at this army as well. There's nothing to change. Okay, this is our round table at the moment. We still have a few more slots open. We have Chancellery. Chancellery manages the affairs of the realm. Laws can only be introduced or withdrawn only during the winter. Decrees seem like instant solutions to problems, but they have long-term disadvantages. You also set out your taxes here. Safety reserves shows you that at least that much gold and food you should spare. There is also a list uh, with, of your most problematic situation. So, well... This is another cool part of this game, as per usual, like, and this is what we have income from taxes, trade and mines, this is what we're spending, this is like the gold from for the income in here, and this is the same. This is also what goes in and goes out, so if you're on minus, it's not necessarily a big problem. You look at your stockpile and you try to figure out whether you need to go with higher taxes or lower taxes. At this point we can only make them up by a few percentages, 30, 35, everything creates problems to your villages. 
There's no trouble some provinces at this point, we can buy some safety reserves of food and gold, like if you feel like you might be going under, but you can see that we got a lot of resources, we got a lot of food during autumn, we got a lot of gold during winter. What else can we do? Lordly privileges, plus 2 to loyalty to the heroes of each fiefdom they have, but 20% of your taxes go away. Monopoly increases the income from your trade, but reduces the income from all your provinces. Right now, we are making more money from mines than we are from trade, so it's not a good idea to go with this yet. Plus 20 tax and food income for the player, 20 less recruitables in all provinces, but and also plus 22 recruitment costs, so you'll make more more uh, money, more food, but it will also start costing more to recruit. Reserve units, minus 25% for filling up ranks and upkeep cost, but also minus 15 gold and food income and minus 1 loyalty per year in every province. That's something to keep in mind. There are and like if you have taxes too high and you make people mad, if loyalty goes down, they will repel. And these are things that we will open in the future. The mercantile law, for example, is plus 75% income, trade income, but minus one food growth and minus 10 military in all your provinces. All of these, everything you can see here, will give you like uh, bonuses and the different types of penalties every each and every one of them and they're very strong if you know how to use them and then you'll have decrease forced recruitment you get minus free loyalty for every province but every ongoing or newly started recruitment takes only one season to finish and more things like that so then we have research welcome to the research we're getting 10 research points from Camelot, we have none from buildings. Uh, from buildings is units parked on, on buildings that offer research points. Uh, or, no, I think buildings are actually from cities, location is from the map. Heroes is what we had on heroes abilities and artifacts, well, they're from artifacts. And you start over here, like for example, we can upgrade the longbowman. And if you hold your mouse over the shield, like the interface of this game is quite good. If you hold the mouse over the shields, you'll always see the unit that they're talking about. So this one will upgrade bowman into longbowman, this one into master longbowman. You can get deepwood archers, this is a separate unit, but it's pretty good. Uh, you can have like this axeman and then we'll have swordsman and then long shields and then uh, the king's guard is a, a mix of units long axes crossbowmen the wagon camp is plus 20 movement points for all armies reinforcement five less upkeep for all armies this is stuff that you will need the break shields like this is the next upgrade for our soldiers as you can see there's so many things that we could do 30% side for all armies and we can get the next levels of cavalry bikes they can be upgraded as well right to carry arms means what let's see plus 20 military minus 2 public safety in all your provinces and this is just military we have economy and we have the kingdom on economy there are different like these are decisions that you can activate in your provinces so if you see that your health is going low you're gonna hire healers because it will help bring plus six health to the province food distribution is i think this is one yeah food production for the territory where you feel like they're starving War taxes could be good. Right to stop goods. And this is plus 2 loyalty per year, but minus 30. Yeah, you know this. 
mine shaft plus 20 income from mines in all provinces. This is good as well. But there's plenty of decisions here. Like, look, plus one loyalty, population growth, surgeons. Um, you can get over here merchants guild, public safety in every province, royal tax collectors. So, a whole lot of stuff happens all around here. And in the kingdom one, well, you will need some of these. So there are, uh, you need these to stop epidemics, conflagrations, droughts, and floods. And all of these will be events that happen in your cities and in your regions, and they will decrease. Like each one of them has different types of. Uh, Benef not benefits, but penalties. And then we have roads. Army move 30 faster in their own provinces when the army moves on roads. Faster construction. Urban asylum. Centralized kingdom plus 50 research points from Camelot. Mason killed minus 20 building cost in every stronghold. You can get spies. The neighboring provinces of the kingdom are always fully visible. The exact composition of armies becomes visible, like defensive and surprise attack, this gives more morale when you attack or defend. We have library, this is for our knights and getting more quests. These are different spells that you can get. So yeah, uh, I, I think I've talked enough over here, there's a lot more to cover, but for now I want the longbowman. It costs 45 research points, that means that at this point we will need a year and one month to get to the more upgraded longbowman, but I would like to do that. One of the things that happen is you have to calculate, and we'll take a look at that, you have to calculate how many RPs you're getting per season, because if you don't have anything queued over here, you might be missing on some special points, or if this research is done, you can't pick another one until it's winter again. So you want to have at least two research going on at a time. Let's see, what do I want to do next? I could go with every level of this one, but I think what I'll do going forward is roads, spies, and after that, I think I'm gonna start with with the dams. Uh, do they cost gold? Let's see. Oh yeah, they do cost resources. But maybe I'm not gonna make so many in advance. Let's see. Actually, let's stay with just one so I can have the resources to recruit, uh, like make this army better. Yes, my lord. Plus, we have another thing going on here. Ready to serve. You go to your stronghold. And now, you can throw in buildings. Not only you can throw in buildings, you can upgrade them as well. So you need the first buildings. You have a merchant court, better gold food exchange rates in the chancellery, minus 15 recruitment cost in the stronghold and neighboring provinces, plus 20 food income from the stronghold and the neighboring provinces, newly recruited units start with 100 extra experience, 0.5 population growth in the stronghold and nearby, plus 1 Christianity for the player, and plus 20% to Christianity for the religion of the stronghold. And, and then we have plus 2 to Tyrant, plus 2 to Rightful, Old Faith, plus 1 skill points to all heroes, and the Academy, which gives you some research points. Like 5. And each and every one of these also has some upgrades. 500 food per season, 10% extra food income from the stronghold and neighboring provinces, 20 less building cost and building time in the stronghold, and the supply house minus 25% less upkeep for the army in the stronghold. Then we have, like, well, what else we cared for? The, the money, or maybe the armors, you get mints. So as I said, Okay, well, the basic idea is that there's a lot, there's a lot to do, right? There's a lot to, to construct and stuff. I will be starting, I 
think going with this would probably be good because I'll want the blacksmith. Food we have plenty of right now. Research is good as well. Let's build the anvil first and then I'll be build a blacksmith. 20 less gold and food to upgrade is pretty good, especially as we will need uh, starting next year, we will need to upgrade our archers. But maybe instead of this, maybe we'll just build the anvil first and leave the money. I told you, this game has many layers and it's only this time that we will spend so much uh, just sitting by and trying to do everything right. Now we have some random quests coming around, like they look like this. Once he was a ro he was a legendary of the Roman Empire, but after the withdrawal of the legions, he became a traitor and soon became known all across the land. He gained his fame by offering only groups of the best quality, never lowering his standards. Browsing through his wares, one can find all manner of sort of rarities and magical items, making him an esteemed guest at every noble's court. Ready to serve on my way. Let's go over here. Into let's see. There's enough military in, in this region. So let's go to recruitment. And we'll ask how many do would we want? Like three bowmen. I don't think I need all of these to be honest. I don't need the heavy knights right now. So I am thinking... I am thinking that what I'm, we might want... Is to... Let's see, actually... Uh, no. Let's stop this like so. I will dismiss one of these turning knights because we have too many troops and they're expensive to maintain. So should have disbanded them last turn, but hey, better late than never, right? Because I want to do that. Bring three archers. And probably another one of these heavies, let's see. On light we have only two troops. Let's have another footman then. Or no, let's bring another heavy then. Okay, other than that... I guess that should be about it. It's going to take three turns until that army is ready. Ready to serve. Gonna take one more turn until this army is ready. Let's end the turn. We'll have to fight these guys since they declared war. Okay, recruitment has been completed. Let's check this quest out. What does he have? Well, Everything is fair game for him, he would accept everything. We can buy a bitter sword plus 1 HP, plus 100 HP for each killed opponent, or plus 2 level to the shit lord skills. This would be great if we were interested in shit. Let's get some gold. Pretty easy to, yeah. Since he accepts both of them, like we can get some gold by selling some food. Let's do that. And if I want to buy the sword, yeah, it's gonna be pretty expensive. I'm not gonna take the sword for now. I'm just gonna take some money. Make sure that we have some in our. coffers and then I'm going over here to this quest and then we're gonna start attacking these guys 
on my way. Let's see into the deep wood. It's a difficult quest. More than a year has passed since the last words from the village of Eglades. The king of Mercia asked for help to find out what's happened. Mm. Like this guy has a bit more adventuring in the leadership, but I'm gonna bring... Uh, it might be about magic and this guy might be better or it might be about fighting Let's go with Sir Balan You arrive at the village of Eglade. The house looks abandoned some sort of lands between the be, Besides the road are neglecting. There is a large heart serving as the local inn on the main square with an old man sitting on a bench I talked to the old man about what happened. A few years ago, the village was different. Merchants stopped here regularly and we had a comfortable life. And the merchants stopped visiting us anymore. It has been a long time since we saw the last of the wagons. I asked him whether he knows why the caravan stopped coming. I reckon it's because of them fairies. I call them fairies, but they aren't little winged creatures my father told me about. Not even close. They came to our village, took the young lads. They didn't care about the elders. We couldn't fight them. No way. Fairies? Then what are the fairies like? They are frightening warriors with armor made of crystal, night creatures, but my knowledge is rather simple. So if you want to know more, talk to the druid living nearby spring. I hear he knows these folks well. Okay, let's go into the inn. As you enter the large hut that serves as an inn, you see that it's rarely used. An old man comes out of the back room and bows deeply. Good day to you, noble sir. What brings you here? How may I help? What happened to the village? Why are the houses so delirious? Some years ago, a huge, uh, huge warriors came out of the forest. They were the creatures from the old tales that the druids called Ancili Knights. According to the stories, they visit our world sometimes and kidnap the children. We had never thought that they truly existed. They chose the young ones and did something to them, something unearthly, then marched off with them. I followed them to a crystal tower and huge building in a shade of blue. I have lived here my entire life, but I've never seen it before. They must have built it with magic. And where is the tower? There is a spring to the east, about a day's walk from here. When you reach it, turn north and sooner or later you'll find the tower. There is a druid living by the spring, he knows more about the shit than I do. I think you should talk to him. Let's go there. You find the druid's home easily. He lives in a neatly built hut next to the spring. He welcomes you warmly, invites you in, and offers you a cup of wine. How may I help you? Good night. I have heard about children kidnapped by fairies. What do you know about them? They are sheep, the folk of Dana, who were among us in the ancient times. When they left, the tales about them remain, and we call them fairies. They come from Tirnanog, the old the world which only heroes can enter. They have two courts, the Sili and the Ancili. Hmm. Tell me about the Sili. The Sili are the children of spring and summer, creatures of sunshine and dawn. I even know a few of them. Their way of thinking is not human, but they are immensely honest, well, at least by their standards. How do you know these creatures? I am a druid, my home is the forest. I met the sheet a long time ago, and I think I was lucky it was the silly I met first. I was fascinated by their nature and the ease with which they handle magic. How could you even talk to them after they kidnapped people? It wasn't the silly who kidnapped the youngsters from the village. It was the doing of the unsilly. Though I have also heard stories about the silly taking children to show them the wonders of Tirnanog. They will tell me about the unsilly. The unsilly are the children of the fall and the winter. They are the rainfall and twilight. They use crystals like we use iron or wood. They will do anything to have their way and they treat mortals like children. It's best not to cross paths with them. So their kind is evil? I wouldn't call them evil. They are just so ancient that they think differently than we mortals do. Find my words. When they challenge you to a duel, that doesn't necessarily mean armed combat. If you defeat someone with your wits, you're just as victorious as a true warrior. And what do you mean only heroes can go to Tirnanog? There are magical paths that point through Tirnanog, 
and even cross into our worlds at times, touching the barriers of Britannia. There are ancient forests we call deep woods, and that's where the barrier is the weakest. Most mortals can't see these paths, and few can walk them. Tell me about the sheep. The sheep cannot stand the touch of iron. For them, even holding a sword made of iron feels as painful as it would be for us if we put our hands into a furnace. And why have they come to our world now? Because their world is a decaying land and they must find another place to live. They chose the deep wood of Bedegrain as their new home. They closed it from the outside world, protecting it from intruders, forcing everyone to turn back. That's all I know about the sheep. I have but one question left. Why are you helping me? Good sir, I want to help you because I don't want you to treat the sheep as mindless monsters. Their world is completely different from ours, thus it is difficult to understand their motives. At any rate, I hope I provide useful advice. I seek the tower trying to find evidence that the, of the existence of Sheed. You say farewell to the druid and walk deeper into the forest. You send out scouts who return quickly. They say that they have found a huge crystal tower with a smaller than city army guarding it. Um, I am stronger to battle or I march into their camp and demand their surrender. I march into their camp and demand their surrender. Leaving your army, you ride into their camp. As soon as they notice you, they enter combat formation. When you tell them to surrender, an unsilly warrior steps out from the tower and addresses you. We should surrender to you, beautiful mortal. Prepare to die. And this is going to be where we stop this time. But next, during the next episode, we'll start with the battle. And then we'll move on to the last rest of the land, but for the first time we will see these unsealy creatures in battle. Until tomorrow, thank you very much for watching and I wish you all to have a wonderful day.